Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining Tea with Tom today. I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to uh, fall in here. But um, as everybody's doing that, I thought I would just introduce today. We have an exciting panel with us today. Um, of course, I have Tom, star of the uh, webinar here. Hey, guys. Um, Tom's my colleague. He's a digital marketing uh, team lead here at SiteSeeker. Uh, I also have with me Jim Beatty. He comes um, with us on the phone. He is a VP of Sales, Marketing, and Product Development at Diorios. And then we have Cal LeClaire. He's the marketing coordinator at Riverhawk Company. Um, and myself, I'm Melinda Aiken. I'm a, an account manager and marketing manager here at SiteSeeker. And again, good morning to everyone and thank you for joining us. We're very excited about today's topic. Um, now is probably the time where everybody is reevaluating not only all aspects of your business because of the pandemic and what has been happening, but we also can't forget about our marketing plan. It's, it's so important to reevaluate where did we think we were going to be when we started our plans for 2020 back in October of 2019, and now where do we see that going, and, and what do we have to pivot because um, there is something in your marketing plan that you're going to have to pivot at this time just due to the nature of, of what's happened. So we're excited to have our panelists on and, and enlighten us about what they're doing in both of their companies, um, as well as you know what we've seen here at SiteSeeker with additional clients and in the marketplace and, and what's trending. So um, with that, I think everybody's in and, and we'll get started today. So um, I first we first want to talk to you, Jim and Cal, about um, how you really determined what happened and what how your business was affected. So we know that a couple weeks, probably six weeks ago, when everything started to really change, um, businesses were going to be affected in one way or another. So how did what did you start to look at? How did you really determine how your businesses were affected? Jim, you want to go first? Or you want? Sure, um, I'm fine, Cal. So yeah, so for us, uh, we we sell uh, for B2B, and we sell mainly perishable uh, dough products, and we sell 90% to the food service industry. So this was a significant impact for us, literally uh, almost overnight uh, for us. Um, we have 10% retail business, and it's interesting the dichotomy because the retail business really took off. Uh, everybody was uh, sort of uh, buying extra products, especially from the frozen food section, the supermarkets. So we had one part of our business that was like doubling overnight, and then we had another significant part of our business that uh, w we lost about 70% uh, of the business literally uh, within a week. So, so a significant uh, impact with this pandemic. And uh, our business, we support the uh, the oil and gas industry and energy um, with our hydraulic tooling products, our, our coupling lines. So to give you a, just a really, you know, quick example, you know, we, we a lot of our customers are like oil refineries, uh, steam turbines, gas compressors, so that type of a market. And we monitor the price of oil and commodities um so that that could certainly have an effect on our business depending what the price of oil is um fortunately you know we we wound up having a pretty good q1 we we met our numbers and we exceeded those a little bit so because those energy companies those oil companies are essential businesses uh, we are also essential because we support them with our products so we you know knock on wood it's been a good good year so far for us. So guys, what were the, the metrics that you were looking at in particular? I, I would assume you're looking at sales data specifically, but Jim, what did it look like when you said that sales just completely dropped off on, on the one side of the business? Was it your your partners calling you up and saying, hey, stop my order? Or was it were you guys looking at your, your sales data sheets and seeing how it trended over the course of that two to three week period? Yeah, that the very first week, I you know, it was right around the eyes of March, if you will, the middle of March, uh, was really interesting. The fact that we had some customers contacting us in the retail and saying, "Look, I need product. Uh, I know I have a lead time of two weeks, but I need product tomorrow." So, so you have that 
impact of it where I need to get people on the line to make some of this product. And then at the very same time, I had a bunch of other customers and shippers calling in and say, look, I know you made this product, but we need to cancel this order. So, so mm-hmm. really we had products, you know, not available that we had to make right away. And then we had products that were readily available and in the, in the, um, shipping stage that were actually getting canceled. We had one customer where we actually shipped the product down to Texas and they were paying, they were going, it was at their door and um, they said, look, we, we don't want to take any more product. And they paid like $5,000 to have it shipped back to us. I mean, they were paying dollars, high expensive freight dollars, especially that first week with freight was uh, uh, with very expensive because of uh, the lack of trucks that were out there. So, so it was really a sort of a dichotomy of our business between retail and food service where we had to, uh, abruptly slow down and stop one big segment and then very quickly ramp up another segment of it. So, so there was, uh, some efforts there that first week that were, um, it took a lot of effort to make it happen, turn it around pretty quickly. Awesome. Cal, how about you? Were you guys looking at, at the pipeline and, and closed deals? <clears throat> so we're, uh, we're a made to order type of a manufacturing company. So anything that was already in the pipeline, um, you know, we were able to to continue to move forward with those products. We didn't really get any cancellations. Um, you know, we're going into a season here where a lot of the customers we support are are shutting down. They're doing maintenance, and they do require the tools that we produce um, and some of the services. You know, we do some refurbishment services for those components to like those those big turbines. So again we're we're kind of in that uh in that mode where where these customers these these companies are calling us um to to continue to forge ahead um fortunately yeah i think i think the sales data is the one that everybody's looking at it's obviously the most critical the most important to to seeing the health of the business and keeping Mm -hmm. an eye on what's taking place in terms of the actual bottom line um as a marketing partner with with you guys with other partners as well a couple of the other metrics that we've been looking at is Google Trends in looking at keywords surrounding the brand, the brand name, the product names, extensions of the product, and different keywords inside of those industries as well to see if there's upticks around those keywords or if there's you know downward spirals around those keywords to see if we need to pivot, change our focus around what we're going after in terms of SEO or um, paid search and the keywords that we're bidding on. And then one step further from there, if you identify those keywords that are being used more prevalently because of what's taking place or no longer being used because of what's taking place, you can shift those keyword strategies. So going into the actual bid levels, if you do have a current um, search program and seeing if there's more costly keywords, if you're needing to pay more because of the competition or the changes in landscape, or if you can double down and spend more money because of declines around keywords and the costs around those keywords. So Keyword Planner inside of Google, as well as Neil Patel's uh, Uber Suggestor are, are both really great tools to see what the, the competition and the, the bidding structure looks like around keywords in particular and seeing how you might be able to spend more in certain areas. So those are a couple of the tools that we've been using on, on top of looking at form fills and, and phone calls and other types of sales oriented metrics uh, with you guys and with other partners as well. Right. Look at the analytics and keep track of those conversions as well, which um, with Jim, we, we have seen those increase significantly um, but in different areas. So um, speaking of, I guess, looking at our business factors and how it affected marketing, of course, you know, we, we all talk about the work from home now and, and working from home. You touched on a little bit, Jim, of your production and how that changed, whether it was a product that already went out the door and and a new product that had to be produced. Um, Sometimes the resources as well. Um, Maybe that's affected Riverhawk a little bit where those raw materials aren't as readily available as they once were. So what business factors, I guess, have been, have you guys seen be affected these last couple of weeks during all this? So certainly the, um, you know, the, the working remote, working from home uh, has been a big effect, you know, on our business because historically we're not a company that's worked from home for the office people. 
um, we've we've always had the tools, we've always had the VPN, um, you know, the SharePoint type of type of resources because we do have people that travel, but just to get everybody out of the office change the process um, and have them go home while still having a manufacturing floor because all those people are still um, at the plant they still have to make the products um, you know that's that's been a pretty big culture shock but I got to say I mean we when this was all going down you know we're in New York State where you know we're we're like ground zero right now for for a lot of the, what's going on even though we're upstate you know we're we're all affected by the uh, the new policies that that they're putting in place. Um, you know, that first week, you know, on Wednesday, it was you know 50% of the workforce has to has to work from home, 75% by Thursday, and then they changed it to to 100% by Friday. And every day, we just you know we were making changes to how we were going to make it work, making changes to our process, um, and we were able to do it. I mean, I we we all kind of pulled together as a team between the management and employees and we we made new processes. We we digitalized some some processes that weren't digitalized before and we really utilized uh, the re, the uh, the in-house resources. So it's it's been a culture shock, but we've we've been making it work. Yeah, I mean, a very similar, Cal, on, on our end as well. Um, it's, it's it's funny that, you know, in, in sales, marketing in general, you know, what you're saying, and then, but very distinctly, we, we sell two very different products. So we sell a, a perishable food product. And the way we sell our food product historically has always been we meet with the customer, and then we have a tasting and a cutting with the customer. Ultimately, you know, they're not going to buy based on just what we say. We have to kind of prove out, and, and the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. So the difficult uh, you know, transition for us where we can't be face to face and actually show a customer um, a product and taste it and, and there it is, you know, hey, this is why, you know, this is a good value. And now you have to do that remotely. Um, so you could still send samples. We do that as well. But it's really different uh, to do it remotely. And the product does speak for itself, which is great. But there's still a preparation method to it and doing it properly and knowing that when you are baking something off and preparing it, that if you're there to assist with that that first time, it really makes a difference in selling the product. So, so sort of reinventing ourselves and doing things from a distance as opposed to face to face um, is is one of the challenges of what's going on. Yeah, we we spoke about print pieces and the importance of print pieces because of the the climate right now. Uh, a few weeks ago, so I'll just point that out again. I, I think it is very important uh, keeping in mind too that it needs to be sent to. You know, home addresses rather than the, the business address since people are, are home right now. Uh, Jim, you, you did, I feel like you're fortunate that you have you know the product itself that can be shipped um, as opposed to um, other other clients and other partners that don't necessarily have that luxury. I, I had something happen to me yesterday. I was dealing with a software provider. We do a lot of um, demos and um, conversations with software that we're interested in. And she sent me a, a video message through email and it was highly personalized. Hey, Tom, what's going on? It was informal. She was talking about, you know, she was doing a kind of a soft pitch, but I thought it was really powerful because we're not able to get together in person. We're busy. So I wasn't even able to take a meeting with her just yet, but she still had that, that personal touch with, with recording a video and sending it to me. And I saw her by face, I heard her voice and it, it, it was, it made a big difference. Um, and I think small things like that can really go a long way because of the climate and the inability for us to to be face to face right now. And I think being even more targeted and even more customized in the presentations and in the proposals that you put together for clients, can, for prospects rather, can, can really go a long way. We should be doing that anyways, but I think with the extra free time that we might have in certain instances, it it needs to be done right now because of how how hectic things are and and how uncertain things are i think if you go that one extra step and you personalize it and you actually prepare it in a way where it is it's 100 percent meant for that particular product i think it, it can really make a big difference in the end so those are a few things that we've been doing is, is tailoring our proposals even more so than we've done before and try, trying to take advantage of recorded video um, a bit more these days as well yeah i think, I think it's the, very impactful. the human element um rather than automation is, I mean, I think in general, it's more impactful, but now more than ever, um, I think we need to connect more on a personal level with people. 
uh, and customers. It, we want to stay in front of them. How, when somebody says your name, it, it makes, I think it's proven like psychologically, right? To use somebody's name because because you, you, you become alert, like you, you're so aware of it. So a video when somebody says, hey, Tom, nice to meet you. My name is Jessica from such and such. It, it really can go a long way and, it, and it's not even, it wasn't even that much of an investment on her time um, or the efforts that she had to put into that. So I, I like that a lot. People are doing that through LinkedIn as well. Audio recorded messages and video recorded messages that they're sending through in-mail or uh, direct message. Right. That's great. Um, speaking of some other hurdles, what areas i mean there are certain hurdles that you know we've been given that we we can't overcome such as like trade shows so i know for for you jim that is something um that you had to scale back on what are some er other areas that you had to scale back on since the pandemic kind of threw these curves at us sure i mean from a manufacturing standpoint and dealing with a perishable product um, we can only make so much product in advance and stock it and store it because it'll start to age uh, in the freezers. So we uh, obviously the, the the first thing was you know um, with with uh, reductions in food service uh, excess of 70 percent, 90 percent the first week, um, and having already made those products, then we had to actually scale back on on personnel, and make some really difficult decisions um, early on in that respect. And and what we've seen since that first week, though, we've seen over the past two weeks, especially from food service, it seems to have bottomed out. Um, it was really scary that first week when all the orders were canceling. We had more canceled orders the first week than orders coming in. Um, so it was very, very scary. It's like, okay, how long is this going to last? And you try to be proactive and reactive at the same time, which is, which is just a challenge. Um, then the next couple of weeks, we've been bottoming out. Now we're starting to see some lift, especially for some of the independents and smaller distributors, which is a very positive sign uh, moving forward. But the, um, from a manufacturing standpoint, the personnel is the, was the, it's, it's the largest cost and the most difficult decisions to make uh, both from the short term or long term particularly for this because we just didn't know what the next week was going to bring um yeah melinda you, you kind of hit it on the head you know as far as the trade shows and the travel goes we we do a lot of travel um internally not just our our sales team but our our engineers our field service um so you know, being able to get out there and get in front of our customers, you know, has has been a big challenge. Uh, we do have a, uh, a a channel of manufacturers reps as well, um, but they're in the same boat too. You know, and they're they're located in the uh, the Southwest and and over by the Gulf. So you know, like um, and they're not able to quite as used to we had 13 um trade shows scheduled for this year and a good part of those about half of them um took place over q1 and q2 we've had to cancel six so far with only one uh being rescheduled for a fall date and you know who knows if that's going to happen you're seeing a lot of stuff get rescheduled for fall but there's just so many unknowns still so that's that's been the the challenging part and you know, we're historically, we are a company that, that travels a lot. So we got to pivot, as you say, and right. keep getting out there somehow. Yeah, I think the, the largest amount of, of dollars that are being scaled back or just saved completely is going to be from the trade shows or, or in-person events that take place. Um, we're also seeing some, some companies save money from, uh, you know, maintenance costs and food costs and things that normally are you know, upkeep around the office and, and upkeep around the facility itself. So when we talk about pivoting, you obviously can, can think about pivoting the dollars that you're saving and scaling back from those efforts and shifting those into other areas. We have one partner that uh, three trade shows were canceled, $80,000 of investment, and they put the, the a good amount of that towards digital ads, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and, and LinkedIn. And that was, that was most of that $80,000 spent that they've shifted there because we've already proven to have really good luck in those. And we hadn't reached that plateau where we were, you know, we, had, we hadn't got to that point where we, we couldn't spend more. So since they were saving those dollars in the trade shows, we could shift those dollars and have an expectation around positive results and success. So that was a really good play and a really logical play for them to make that we helped execute um, on their behalf. What's really fascinating, I have this personality type where I'd rather make a decision fast 
fail and then learn from it. And what we're seeing in this landscape that exists now is <clears throat> the companies that have too much red tape and lengthy approval processes and are delaying decision making, they're the ones that are not being successful, successful right now. The ones that are making decisions that are, are taking time to, to think it through quickly, pivot and decide a new direction, like you two on this call, there's the ones that are actually figuring out a way through this and are finding success because they can make decisions faster. And, and that's the beauty of this is, is when you're agile and you're savvy and you're not afraid to take a risk and, and make a decision, you're gonna be able to see success and, and put your efforts and your dollars into the right areas. And even if you, you test something out and you fail, at least you can make a decision again quickly and, and shift it into yet another direction. Just a couple of examples, we have you know some partners that we found success beyond Riverhawk and, and Diorios. Core Light Theatery has shifted focus to um, free delivery and curbside pickup, and they're seeing six, some success across their stores around, around that change in direction. We have a financial services company that you know normally does business loans for small and medium-sized businesses. They shifted their focus to providing support around the small business application process from the federal grants and, and loans. Some email marketing that we did resulted in 60 calls in a 48 hour period. I mean, these are people that are, are savvy, we're working closely with them, we're making decisions, we're changing their the, the entire messaging of, of how they normally sell and it's, it's resulting. And you, know, you, you gotta, you, you can't be afraid to take a risk, I guess is, is my underlying uh, I agree. punch right there. But, um, you know, there's definitely companies out there that, that are, are seeing good success when it comes to this digital marketing thing. And, you know, we're, we got to work together to, to find the path that is, is the best one to move forward with. And, you know, the other cool thing is there's a lot of deals out there right now. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of discounts for advertising space, both print, digital. Um, and, you know, you, you got to, like you said, you got to make a, a quick decision and have a quick turnaround. Um, for example, you know, we were we were able to get a, a full page um, ad in a in a industry in, the, in our industry's biggest publication, you know, that um, all of our customers read and, and a lot of potential customers. Um, and they offered it up, you know, it was a big discount compared to to what they, they usually charge. And we said, yeah, let's go for it, let's do it. I had to have artwork in by the next day. <laughs> we had to make a decision quick, but, um, you know, I, I think it was the right choice. And it was just us reallocating some of those trade show dollars that we're getting back instead of just hanging on to them, thinking they're going to keep us warm when it's cold. They're not. You gotta you gotta do something with it. So Good I agree point. with you. Yeah, trying to make sales, they're trying to make sales too. Yeah, we've actually uh, put uh, more dollars uh, that we saved from the trade shows into product development and the um, and packaging into retail as the market shifted from food service to retail. So we put some dollars into that. And also we're banking into the future. Our, most of our trade shows are in March and then again in late fall are the two seasons for us. And um, so the dollars we saved on the March show, we're banking uh, coming out of this. We're looking positive for the second half of the year, Q3 or particular Q4. Um, so we actually tripled our booth size for the fall pizza show. Um, and still, just like you said, Cal, there's some good deals out there to negotiate. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great time to negotiate those fall shows. There is a little bit of a risk because it depends how quickly we come out of this and how willing people are going to travel after that. Uh, but when we do a trade show, especially in the fall, we want to make it virtual as much as uh, literal being on the floor and make sure we have an extended presence there. So, so yeah, there are some, you could take $1 of your trade show, which was very expensive, and probably get $3 worth of value in the fall right now if you negotiate at this time. That's an awesome point, Jim, because, yeah, the, making the decision right now might not be to spend it right now. Maybe that decision is to hold on to it and spend it in a different way in Q3, Q4. Uh, we have another partner, it's a healthcare provider, you know, laser therapy. There's no elective surgeries right now. So they're, they're saving their dollars, a wise decision for when this normalizes and everybody has put off getting their surgeries for two months. And there's gonna be phones ringing off the hook because everybody has, has delayed, you know, getting those surgeries done. So we're going to double down when that happens, you know, in, in Q3 or hopefully this this gets wrapped up pretty soon. Uh, really good points, definitely. Yeah, great points. And I think you guys had a spot as well that um, you were able to get in in one of your industry magazines as well, Jim. And, and I think to your point, Cal, it's there's probably more more eyes on those pages too. 
yes, they're, you know, maybe sent to the same amount of people, but people are home now and they're probably taking that time to open that magazine a little bit more than they may have in the past. Um, so I think we can catch the attention of people a little bit more now when we hit those industry related um, publications and um, really make a bigger impact because like you said, you, you made that quick decision, you turned around artwork in a day, which can be um, can be a challenge at, at times to get approvals. So both great examples. Um, you, got, you guys touched on it a little bit, but looking ahead, um, you know, we talk about pivoting your marketing plan and how it's essential, but um, I think you had some great points of, of looking ahead and being ready for Q3, Q4, gearing up, because if you wait until Q3 to make a decision, or you wait um, until even two weeks from now to make a decision, because things are kind of starting, I don't want to say opening up, I, I know that the state of New York is, is still till I think May 15th on lockdown, if you will, but um, what are your guys' plans or how are you looking ahead to just prepare everything and to get everything ready so that when you can hit that button per se, you're ready to go? So, you know, one of our projects that we're working on and, and you guys over at SiteSeeker are, are giving me a lot of support with um, is a new website. And that was something we had planned before the pandemic. But, you know, given everything, you know, we're able to, to put a lot more focus into this. And we want this to be uh, as good as we can make it, because even though people are distracted right now, um, this is going to, you know, the curve is going to flatten, you know, people are eventually going to be able to to move on with their lives in some way, even if we have to wear a mask, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, you know, when when we launch the new website and this thing simmers down, it's, I want to go full speed ahead. You know, I want to up the Google ad spend. I want to up, you know, the, the digital spend on, on LinkedIn, Facebook ads and drive as much traffic to that site. I want to, you know, have more, have new fresh content ready, you know, new white papers, um, new case studies um, for, for people to, to download and, and read and, and, engage with us with um so that's that's kind of what i'm looking at um and you know we're we're kind of looking i'm hoping you know by may 15th you know things start to open back up whether it gets pushed out again or not we will be in may to uh to do that but you know, that's that's kind of where we're going to make our big push yeah, I think Calvin's on point, um, and, and uh, also what we're doing is, uh, you know, we immediately, as we pivot towards retail from food service, uh, purchased some lists, contact lists, and started making some initial calls, cold calls, um, and some additional touch points um, via email and things like that. Um, and the response we, we received from these retailers, um, obviously, you know, everybody's busy right now just putting out the fires, if you will. But they said, wow, your product looks really interesting. Um, I'm interested in it, but right now there's a lot going out, which we we made our calls, we were empathetic calls, we understand that uh, we're just trying to help, you know, feel out immediate pain that we can be a solution for, but also what the silver lining is down the road. This isn't a forever thing, and so how do we come out of this? And one of the things uh, working with our sales team is um, they still want to talk to us, these prospective customers. Um, so they said, hey, call me back in July or, or, you know, in August or whatever time, call me back later and, and we'll talk. And what I'm uh, working with the sales team is like, to see if we can get the tentative uh, meeting now for June or July. So instead of waiting to call back in June or July, because what's going to happen when the lights go back on, these buyers and so forth are going to be twice as busy as what they are now because everybody's going to be pushing to get things going again. So if we can get appointments scheduled now, even if they're tentative, so if we make one, say, after Memorial Day, say, first week or second week of June, there's a tentative, and it could be a, a phone meeting or, or in person. And the worst case scenario, you get to the week before, and if things haven't opened up yet, then you just, you know, reschedule a meeting, which everybody on both ends will, will understand. But if you did set that tentative meeting and now you can get in there in June or July, instead of calling back in June or July and not getting in until maybe August or September at that point, because everybody's going to be so busy doing some other things. So that's part of our, our main 
uh, focus is to get some appointments set now for Q3 um, lined up. So once the lights do go back on, um, we already have some things scheduled and ready to go instead of waiting. That's perfect. I like that idea of, of trying to schedule those ahead of time uh, for when things normalize. That's awesome. Uh, Site Seeker's doing a few things. Um, right now we know that that online shopping and, and, and Amazon is, is getting heavy traffic right now. So we're trying to talk through with our partners around Amazon ads, you know, particularly in, in like the, the grocery, food and beverage, um, outdoor and sports and uh, arts and crafts, I think are the top markets right now for, for online sales with Amazon. But the activity itself on Amazon is just at a peak right now. So taking advantage of Amazon ads, um, and we know media consumption right now is crazy with, with online video. So not only YouTube ads, but thinking through and strategizing around OTT, um, advertising, over the top advertising, Hulu, uh, Roku, Vudu, um, different streaming platforms like that, how we could better take advantage of getting in front of people that are, you know, just binge watching <laughs> shows right now because of the, the free time they have, especially in the evenings. We're also putting together some new product offerings, a 90 day sales guide, a 90 day sales survival guide, which helps you know businesses navigate the the difficult waters right now and and get them in a place through you know sales training and a custom mini site and some pay per click advertising you know to to help them through this difficult period and, and keep sales uh, at a healthy healthy pace right now um, and hopefully get them through this hurdle uh, focusing on e commerce especially for B two C companies so that way we can build out an extension to their website and they can more easily you know have have sales go through the site. In a small business package for for small companies that are uh, really need a facelift or a lift up and, and can really you know take advantage of this time period through a, a new website or through some increased activities around seo and pay-per-click advertising and, and be in a better place during and after this period so yeah site seeker we're, we're working right <laughs> really hard right now to to redefine some of our offerings and take advantage of, of some of the companies that um really need some help right now awesome. yeah well I don't know if we had any questions come in. Cliff, did we have any questions come in? Uh, yeah, we have two, and Tom kind of just touched on one. Um, but uh, the first question, our marketing budget has been cut dramatically due to the uncertainty in the market. Do you have any creative ideas of what marketing teams can do for free or very low cost during these times? That's a good question. Um, we can definitely, I think I, I would need to know a little bit more about the the business and the industry to come up with what the best tactics might be that are free or more inexpensive. But uh, I think that that small business package that I just referenced, uh, obviously there's a lot more details in the actual package itself. Um, if a, a new kind of small scale website is required, if there's setup work needed on the, the SEO or the pay-per-click side, if there's um, video type of advertising that can go a lot further from an awareness and impression standpoint than it would, let's say, LinkedIn. Uh, there's certainly smarter decisions that can be made depending on what your goals are, but um, I think there's some other tactics out there like like chat, chat bots and, and things that can help automate some processes and not necessarily put the strain on the, the staff itself or um, other type of costs that might be hidden um, with having to manage those type of activities. All right, and the second question uh, surrounds tips on video tools. What video tools do we use as an agency? Cal, Jim, do you guys use any sort of in-house um, production tools? Before I, I jump in, I don't want to cannibalize these, these questions. No, I, I, I use um, Premiere a little bit, um, you know, iMovie, which is a, a stripped-down version of Final Cut Pro, but it's, it's very... Um, a very powerful program if you're on a on a Mac base. Um, that's kind of where I'm at, Jim. What about you? Yeah, no, um, we rely on on um, again putting it into their mouth. So, so sometimes the video is nice when we get to the technical aspect down the road, instructional videos, things like that we can offer. Uh, but initially, it's it's getting uh, food into their mouth, so to speak. So uh, we send out a lot of samples, let them taste it, and then we have discussions uh, uh, over the phone with it. Tom, you mentioned earlier. You know, turning that into sort of a video conversation, which um, which is something we'd be um, very eager and interested to do. Uh, but we have not maximized, I think, video potential that is out there. And that's the silver lining, I think, in, in a lot of this is that each day as we're going through this as a manufacturing, 
we're learning so much that we would not have learned about what's going on in the industry and even with technology wise and so forth and even marketing um you know we're forced to you know we're forced to reinvent ourselves and and this is a you know um that is actually a very um important tool as we we start to we've bottomed out we're starting to moving on beyond this um we have another five or ten types of uh, tools that we're utilizing that we didn't utilize before uh this occurred we were just too busy you know even dealing with uh working with new prospects new customers and learning how to cold call all over again and reaching out with you know six to eight touch points and emails um it's stuff we didn't have time for before we we're too busy you know handling our day-to-day that now we have that time, especially with the sales and marketing teams to sort of reinvent ourselves. So this is something we're doing actually on the go. And then we're doing with the, with the help of site seekers. Uh, we have in-house marketing and that's great, but we sort of have blinders on of what we've done over all the years. And what um, by utilizing someone like site seekers, it exposes ourselves to what else is going on in the marketplace as well. So it just, it just uh, gives us much more of a, of a landscape view of different tools we can use that we just didn't know before, or if we just kept everything in house uh, that we were able to use. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I know we, that, um, sorry, Tom, I'll let you, real quick, I know YouTube also came out with an editing um, tool, if you will. So if you're looking to create a short thicket six second bumper ad or a 30 second you could utilize their tool it, it's already on that platform so that's something that i believe rolled out about two weeks ago but it's pretty user friendly they have some templates on there so that would be an inexpensive tool for for a video if you'd like to check that out i think um canva yeah. also if you're looking for user friendly and expensive has some some really basic video stuff on there too yeah. I was gonna mention Canva. Yeah, yeah, definitely like quick animations and short gifts. Really, mm -hmm. it, they can make a big difference, you know, in terms of your your Facebook uh, marketing, your Facebook advertising. Yeah, Canva, great tool. I'm glad you mentioned iMovie. That's a good one. We use Premiere as well. It's an Adobe product. Um, and yeah, good mention, Melinda, YouTube Studios. That's fresh out the box. I just got the email yesterday that said it's officially launched out of beta. So I'm sure more content creators are gonna be using that. Um, even if they're more familiar and, and feel like there's more value inside of the expensive tools, I think just from like a, a, a time saving standpoint to do it right inside of the tool itself and have it, you know, be able to to publish right when you're you're done finishing your post production, your editing. Uh, whoever asked the question though, I know Devin was doing some tool some research just the other day on on free or inexpensive tools. Uh, we can send them a note um, with whatever research and, and tools that Devin uncovered the other day. Yeah, we can add some in that. You guys will get a follow-up email with the recording of this webinar, so we can include some of those um, free tools and in, in, uh, lower expense tools, if you will. And Cal, I don't know if you, you look like you wanted to mention something about marketing budget, so I don't know if you want to kind of close with um, an idea that you had. It looked like you wanted to speak or, or maybe... Um, nope, I, actually maybe. I was just saying, well, I had... I had one. I had. I just had one more thing to mention about the video, um, just as a as a personal tip. If you're doing something for social media, you're trying to get more into the videos. I know there's a lot of you know great content out there that's you know really really super polished. You know with their their transitions and their music and everything. If you don't have a lot of experience, you know doing it, I'm not saying don't make it. You know, don't make it well. Don't make it good, but you know, don't get caught up on the little details, you know, I mean, do your transitions, do what you can, use the user-friendly software, but don't, you know, spend so much time on it that you're you're missing the boat. You know, I, I feel like people would rather hear from you um, and see something that, you know, the production quality is just maybe just a little bit less, you know, than, than where you would see it on some of these other sites or, or you know, channels, but, just get it out there. Do what you can do. I mean, you're, it's amazing what your your smartphone is capable of as far as shooting. You know, my iPhone can shoot a 4K video. Um, so, <laughs> you know, the, the quality is there um, just from the source material. Just just get it done, I guess. Definitely. And, and to add on that, doing the same thing from a, a selling standpoint, recording those videos of yourself, sending them out, posting mm -hmm. those thought leadership pieces on your personal, you know, LinkedIn. Um, if it's not necessarily about the product, but it's about you and, and, and what you're selling, I think that's equally as important. And, and don't be afraid to put yourself in front of the camera because it's going to be way better than than 
posting something that's simplistic or not posting at all, for heaven's sake. Exactly. Great points. Yeah, so with that, um, I just want to thank everybody uh, for joining us today with your for tea with Tom. And I especially want to thank you, Jim and Cal, for joining us. It was a pleasure having you on today. Thank you for sharing all of your insight with all of us. And um, we appreciate it. So thanks for having thanks, me. Thanks, everybody. Thank thanks, you. Cal. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everyone. Absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye.